Client node diversity is so important. And what do I even mean by that? It's the software that runs the nodes for the blockchain. And at the moment in the Kadana ecosystem, there's only really one piece of software that runs all the nodes. And we need different versions built by different teams in different programming languages to really diversify that level of risk. If that piece of software goes down, it could take out a huge portion of the network. So Mikhail is joining me on this episode to talk through his implementation of a Cardano node. And there's three parts to it in TypeScript. So Mikhail, welcome back to the podcast. Hi Pete, nice to be here uh, as always. So what have you been up to? I've seen quite a few posts lately on Twitter uh, talking about what you've been building. Well, I'm, I'm focusing on, on a proof of concept for uh, an alternative node, which is, uh, of course, not uh, a node meant to be used by people, but just to demonstrate the possibility of uh, like demonstrating practically that we can have alternative nodes is it not some arcane uh, piece of software. Uh, so I'm focusing on that. That is what uh, some of the posts uh, lately have, that have, have, have gained some attention lately uh, re regarding this proof of concept. And this proof of concept is uh, a demonstrate the feasibility uh, also of the proposals uh, that which, by the way, by the time we are registering in an hour, open the voting. So, so to demonstrate the feasibility of the proposal regarding uh, an alternative node, uh, in my case of TypeScript, there are other other teams working on other languages for for uh, for the Cardano node, which is uh, also really important because it's not just one node that will do uh, client diversity. So, yeah. So I'm 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 mainly focusing on implementation of an alternative node in TypeScript. Uh, many <laughs> the, one of, of the main question I, I receive is why TypeScript. First of all, there is a lot of work already done for Ledger as an, as an example that was needed for PTS. So all the work that was done with PTS for the off-chain will be reused where possible, of course. But also TypeScript has the great advantage uh, advantage of uh, being extremely browser friendly. Uh, you just compile it to JavaScript and you run it in the browser. So one of my long-term idea, which I'm really in love with, is maybe one day having a uh, small little nodes on each DAP running or uh, every user machine so that we can have truly decentralized uh, decentra decentralized application. So uh, essentially, you have your DAP, and your DAP is not doing requests to some server, which might be Blockforce or might be some server of, of the uh, DAP provider. Um, but instead, it has its own little node. It keeps it some part of the ledger that only the user needs. And that way, it can communicate directly with the network of nodes. So this, this would attach something like a, a light TypeScript node would perfectly uh, suit the, the, this kind of job. So of course, yeah. this, this is possibly a, a long-term goal, uh, but we, we have to start somewhere. So. Um, <laughs> yep, yep. That that is uh, a really cool vision. When when you were filling in the uh, interview request form, and I was looking at that, it's like running a node in a browser. Yeah. Hang on, that's actually a really cool idea. <laughs> so yeah, like a, a really lightweight version of the yeah. the node, so you could maybe submit transactions or something really quickly. Yeah. So um, you get past the the mempool. Um, uh, blockages that you find in you know high peak times or something like that so they, I think it's a really cool idea um, so how far away is this I know you've got three proposals to yeah. build up the ecosystem around it and I'm, I'm pretty sure that each one of these are little stepping stones to get to that end goal can we get a, a quick re um, overview of all these particular sure. proposals there are three proposals regarding the Cardano node uh, and that is because uh, the Cardano node can be seen as uh, three main components. There is a network component, uh, which is, uh, if you go look at, well, now the intersect uh, repositories should should be one-to-one -one with uh, Ouroboros network, uh, which takes care of the communication with uh, with other nodes. So there are mini protocols where, where, where node talks to each other. They submit and receive blocks, block seeder, and of course, transactions. So that th there is one, uh, proposal that focuses on that component, which is the network. There is another component of, of the node, which is the ledger, which essentially defines the data types of what can go into the blockchain. So 
how a transaction is structured, how a block is structured, um, and all that kind of uh, stuff. So it defines the, ru the rules of what is the data that we are going to put in the blockchain. And then there is uh, the consensus. So these are the three, the, the three components which a Cardano node is composed of. Network for communication, ledger for the rule of what uh, goes in the blockchain, and consensus is, uh, finally is used uh, for um, agree between um, agreeing between nodes which blocks are valid. Uh, well, of course, the decision of, of the block is done locally, uh, but uh, each node then communicates with each other, and uh, the, con the consensus is needed to make sure, in a way or another, that we are following the same chain. So, uh, well, of course, that this corresponds to Ouroboros consensus in the Intersect uh, repositories, uh, where uh, essentially is the, the, the core part of, of a node communicating with, with other, making sure the protocol stays, stays, stays up. So all these together may be summarized in one single proposal, which is uh, have a Cardano node in TypeScript. But of course, uh, we, we can also split them so that we have Greater, greater possibility to at least have something to start with. So maybe only one gets approved. At least we can start by that one and then later come up uh, with a, a full node, of course. It, it's a, a huge amount of work and a big undertaking. So hopefully you do get some funding and that way uh, some more people could possibly yeah. join in and help the development. Um, are, are you still working by yourself on a lot of this stuff that you're doing for PluTS and yes. some of these projects? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, there is also a proposal for PluTS. So of course, if more than one uh, is approved, of course, uh, and I hope so, someone uh, will, will be able <laughs> <laughs> to to join me, uh, but um, yes, I'm I'm working already on well the the, the Ouroboros network was already there because it is a, a nice tool uh, to have uh, even without the node itself you can use Ouroboros network to talk directly with the node uh, the the Haskell node so because it's based on on those standards so uh, Ouroboros network I'm already working on it uh, there are many clients uh, implemented. Uh, for each of the uh, mini protocols. So maybe you, you could use that only that package if you want, uh, only to submit directly transaction to the node, and then uh, the node will, will, care, will take care of the rest. I'm also, well, as I said, uh, I'm also working on the Cardano Ledger already because uh, it was taken essentially from PluTS. PluTS has also an off-chain part, so uh, in order to submit transactions and sample, we need to know our transaction is structured, and that is why the Cardano uh, ledger uh, already exists. Of course, uh, it's not ready for, uh, it doesn't have all the uh, components. As, as an example, for PluTS, we, I didn't need to have the structure of a block, so there is all that part to, that needs to be implemented in the ledger, or uh, multi-era blocks. Uh, as we know, Cardano supports multiple uh, ledgers, uh, because we have a different ledger essentially for every era. So uh, that that there is some work, of course, still, still to do, and that is why the proposal in the first place. If if it, if it was already ready to be used, of course, I wouldn't have proposed it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, now, well, one of the criticisms about uh, JavaScript and um, uh, that people say is that it's not as secure as other alternative languages. Uh, what what can you say about that to uh, try and uh, change people's minds? Yeah, okay. Uh, the, 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 the thing about security um, at the end of the day goes down to a matter of um, standards and uh, discipline uh, on how you write your code. You, um, as, as an example, Haskell instead is, is seen as a very secure language uh, because of its strictness with types. Uh, so it's, it's, it's formality. But if, if you want, you can use uh, pure script. Uh, in in browsers and pure script is essentially the Haskell syntax which compiles down to JavaScript and JavaScript is what is running. So the difference between uh, something like uh, pure script and Haskell in the matter of security is is not that different, other than pure script is strict maybe, but still. Uh, and and you are basically running Haskell or uh, as JavaScript and. And you're running JavaScript in the end. The difference with, with something, with the same program, maybe written in JavaScript, 
is that you are enforcing a, a strict set of rules using uh, pure script. So you are running JavaScript, which is said to be un not secure, but you are imposing yourself discipline uh, using pure script in, in that case. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. So uh, in, 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 that way you, you obtain a much uh, more secure software, even if you are running JavaScript. So JavaScript uh, is um, less secure. And you, you can write unsecure code even in Haskell, to be honest. There, there are unsafe spun functions. So if you really force it, you can write unsafe code even in Haskell. It is not really a matter of languages. It's more a matter of discipline when you write the code and gotcha. uh, respecting a set of rules, of uh, some standards, uh, best practices. Uh, but Yes, it's more about the discipline rather than the language. You can, you can write a safe code in, in any, really, really any language. Understood, understood. So it's just, it comes down to the strictness of uh, how you write your code. Yeah. So uh, not like myself writing JavaScript, copying and pasting uh, bits of code <laughs> from uh, websites and now chat GTP to make uh, websites do things. So uh, not that type of development. So that's really good to hear and uh, have those comparisons. So uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will get a better understanding of that. The, one other question I, I get a lot uh, also is uh, regarding the performance of JavaScript. But uh, I must say, like, yes, considering it is JavaScript, so we know it, it is not supposed to be a, a low-level language. R the, the performance of such an high-level language is, is impressive if you consider that it is such an, an high-level language. Uh, that is because we are seeing a lot of uh, runtimes being developed. There is, of course, historical node, which is pretty performant. Uh, we are seeing ban, which uh, has some huge uh, statements regarding the, their performance. So even even under the aspect of the performance it, itself, uh, I wouldn't e uh, I wouldn't be too uh, concerned. Uh, of course, the, uh, also there the uh, it it also depends on how you write your code. Uh, if you write uh, messy code. It doesn't even depend if it is JavaScript or if it is C++ or C, because if, if you write messy C, uh, you can expect uh, the worst to happen, and you should expect the worst yep. to happen. So uh, also that uh, is, is not that much a question of language itself, rather than the discipline that, that is uh, imposed when writing software in general. I can see this being used in very specific scenarios as well. So maybe it wouldn't be used for every state pool operator's pools out there, but uh, the, the use case that you're talking about uh, having in your browser so that uh, you can run a local node um, on your environment to submit transactions, I think is really cool. So uh, it's, it's a very um, uh, specific use case that um, I could see this being used for as well. Yeah, the, the, users, the use cases, uh, to be honest, uh, are, are really, uh open to, to who, is, who, who wants to use the, the software. Uh, the, the, the thing about the three proposals is that uh, they will be uh, develop, develop, uh, modularly. That means that uh, eventually we will be able to uh, take these, these modules that are ready to be used plug and play, essentially, for uh, the Cardano node and write uh, specific implementation of the Cardano node. So not just a full Cardano node that does what the Cardano node does, but maybe some DAP developer who only wants to follow the chain and doesn't really, doesn't really care uh, about the uh, ledger state, as a, the stake, as an example. So we can write a specific node that is optimized, follow only the blocks, um, just listen to the events of the blocks uh, without the overhead of having the ledger. So we can write uh, highly, in, in, a, in a certain sense, uh, highly specified uh, nodes for the purposes uh, of uh, each uh, of, of each user that, that wants to, to to have a node, and that node would do uh, everything that is needed for that. Uh, so the, the case of uh, a browser node uh, is only one example of, of this higher set of, of possible nodes. Uh, the browser node would only would only do. Um, uh, listening to ledger up the updates uh, on only of the parts that it are, are needed for that specific user, uh, so that he can validate transaction that is uh, that he will build will build and he can submit transaction that he has built, uh, but he won't do any anything else. Uh, we can we can think of this kind of node, or we can think uh, other kinds of nodes. So the main utility 
itself. Yes, of course, uh, to be honest, the main utility is having a full node, but the second main utility is having many other possible kinds of sub subsets of light nodes. We can even think of uh, light nodes only for uh, DRAPs when we reach Con Conway, so uh -huh. only that, that follows things that are uh, related to governance. Uh, so th you do not have to run the whole data loss, which takes enormous resources. You just have your light node uh, that takes care of the things that are only meant for DRAPs for governance, and uh, you can run it on much lighter machines. So uh, this would be another great benefit. So yeah, the, the, use, case, the use cases uh, are as many as the many possible nodes we can imagine. <laughs> wow. Okay. Really excited about this one then. Uh, so uh, I'm all for Cardano node diversity. So I'll put all the links and everything for all your proposals. I'll, I'll find that uh, PluTS one as well. If you've got any more, just uh, uh, send them my way. I'll put them in the links down below as well. So if anyone's really interested in this and help support uh, the diversity in the Cardano ecosystem, please vote for them. And Mikhail, thank you again for joining me on this podcast and uh, talking through your proposals and what you've been building as well. Well, it's always fun to be here. So uh, thank you for inviting me. All the links and references in the show notes down below. You can also get to it at learncardano.io. We have our own proposals there as well. You can check them out to see what we're building for the DeFi ecosystem in Cardano. We're doing a lot of courses here and we really would love your support as well. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click that notification bell. If you want to see diverse nodes in the Cardano ecosystem, make sure you vote for those proposals and I'll see you in the next episode. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast.